Whenever you make the commitment to purchase insurance of any type, you need to find somebody to pair up with who is reliable, friendly, knowledgeable, and let's be honest with each other, makes you feel like family. Well, Jimmy Saxton is that guy, and he has been insuring Austin for several decades. He's also an Austin, Texas OG, the pride of Westlake, a Longhorn legacy, and his dad, the late James Saxton, was a Heisman finalist for the Longhorns. Visit SaxtonInsurance.com or stop by the office. It's right across the street from the historic Mattel Rancho. Well, unless you've been hiding under a rock, you know what week it is, the Masters week. Uh, we made it to the weekend. Um, you know, the guys who made the cuts, uh, one of which may be a shock to you, but I've got two guys who we're going to talk about this. They're deeply involved in the golf community of Austin, Texas, and it just dawned on me, and they're probably going to give me a hard time when I admit this. We all went to the same high school, one of which a decade later, the Masters. Let's talk about it. Well, here they are, the Todd Leonard and the Charlie Crenshaw the Sixth, and yes, a part of the legendary iconic austin golf family the crenshaws uh i don't know if that's the type of music you would ever hear out on augusta national but i had to run with it because my selection was limited fellas <laughs> well i'm sure there's a lot of copyright deal to, to deal with there but i think that you made a uh a-okay -A -A <laughs> it was good it was good <laughs> well charlie crenshaw the six in the upper right and todd leonard uh on the bottom Right there, we're both or all three graduates of the L.C. Anderson High School in Austin, right. Texas, uh, both of which are key figures at Balcones Country Club. Uh, Todd, the head golf pro, and Charlie, um, he's helping people who may not have very many golf skills become <laughs> skilled at golf. I try as hard as I can, man. And uh, that, so day to day. Um, I help. You know, I, I, I'm Todd's first assistant. So the guy, the guy below me right there is my boss. He's a great boss. I love the guy. And uh, yeah, we do a day to day operation at Balconies and I also teach lessons and uh, love every minute of it, man. Todd, uh, how do you feel about being uh, Charlie Crenshaw the sixth's boss? <laughs> I've known Charlie six years now um, and every day is weirder. <laughs> Uh, what? <laughs> yeah every, every week i get a little surprised even though i shouldn't uh, yeah but um he's uh he's been a awful awful <laughs> he's, been, he's been an awful friend <laughs> he's been an awesome friend uh he's been um a great employee for me uh you know we went back to avery ranch uh 2018 2019 uh, and then transferred over to Balcones, uh, which was a great move for us. Yep. And um, it's been uh, it's been great. Uh, we we love it over there. It's the club that has the most fun. Uh, we love the members and the atmosphere, and uh, it's never a dull moment for sure. It yeah. is. The few times I've been able to stop by, I've you know I probably stayed there longer than I had budgeted time for, and that's because of you too. And you know, when you get a chance to uh, become a member or play golf, uh, find a member and go play golf and visit these two, you're better off for it. Now, before we move forward, we got to give a shout out to the, the the companies who own the logos. Uh, lower left, Honest Plumbing and Air, they just went through a uh, ownership change and a branding change that happens often. It's now Honest Plumbing and Air, where a handshake still means something. So that means a lot to people like the three of us who are ATX OGs, and we still believe in that handshake. And of course, Shoal Creek Saloon, iconic place. The show, the crawfish now are massive and they're affordable because there was a shortage of them from the Louisiana swamps because or ponds because of the drought last year. So go see our guys over there, Ray and Brian. Let them know your fans of this. I, I will say that, that Ray Canfield is a great great friend of uh, the Crenshaw family and beautiful that place that place is is 
I, I have had so many memories at Shoal Creek Saloon as far as the shuffleboard yeah. and as far as just watching football and yes, yes, eating crawfish and uh, everything they have on the menu is fantastic. So if you yeah. if you're watching this and you have not been to Shoal Creek Saloon, I'm telling you, you've got to go. You've got to go. I think the three of us, if we can get, if we, you know, we can get Todd's much better half done. We could all make a day, like a, like a day. Y'all are available on a Saturday, right? I'm flexible, man. You just tell me. That's right. We can make it happen. As yeah, Todd is enjoying the Leonard Resort behind him. Um, guys, uh, real quick thoughts. We'll begin with Todd. Uh, your thoughts on the first two rounds of the Masters. I think we've seen a ton of great golf and great moments already. Yeah, um, you know, little surprising Shambo being up there, uh, but kind of at the same time, not really. Um, he he can overpower that that course can be overpowered. Tiger did it, obviously. Uh, Bubba Watson, you've had some shorter hitters throughout the years that will win there. Mike Weir, Zach Johnson, but uh, if if you're a bomber, then you have advantages. Um, especially on all the par fives um, for those longer hitters are really reachable. Uh, that's really where they they're winning the tournament. So, um, and Bryson's won a major um, in 2020, the U S open, which is probably the hardest major to win. So um, he's looking good, but Scheffler number one player in the world. Um, he's right up there and um, you know, he's going to be there on the, you know, come the back nine Sunday. How about you, Crenshaw? I mean, it's – I'm not shocked at anything that happens, but, you know, some very unpredictable things do happen at Augusta National, and you know that firsthand. Well, I don't know about firsthand. You know, I haven't had the privilege of playing there, but um, I will say this about Augusta. Um, from from what I've seen, obviously, it's uh, – it, it, ha- it has a certain mystique about it that no other major really has. Any major is hard to win. Any tournament's hard to win, but in majors are very, very difficult to win. And I think that the, there, there is some sort of thing about Augusta National where even the best players in history couldn't quite capture a, a win at Augusta just because of, of what it is, of what the weekend brings, of what the, you know, just the, the history behind it, the, 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 the patrons – the tell I, I don't I, it's just but no it never it never surprised me who's on the leaderboard during the first two rounds it never surprised me there's no, there's always like a the amateur that's up there some somehow yeah. there's always like a freddie couples that's up there or a bernhard <laughs> longer that's still like what the hell that guy's like 500 par and then and then the weekend happens and things kind of shift but um what's so special about augusta is uh once that weekend hits, moving day and then obviously Sunday, it's just uh, there, there's some guys who can just win it and some guys who just will never be able to. I, I agree with you because I, I liken it now. It just dawned on me this week that the Masters is very similar to men's college basketball March Madness. You have some underdogs that make it to that second weekend, and that would be relative to making it to the weekend at Augusta, and that kind of is what is happening. And I just put together some bullet points of, you know, what what we were thinking going into it, what would happen. And, Todd, you know, I think we all, all three of us can say, Tiger has to battle much more than just the course to see the weekend. And he's done it. He made the cut at one over. I think he had an even 72. But you you reference DeChambeau. I mean, it's – is his game a fit for Augusta? Uh, it is. Um, you know, he uh, he's the crazy math guy. Um, and he's, you know, two, three years ago, he he went the Charlie Crenshaw route and started just bulking up like crazy. Uh, and The gun show. Yeah. Uh, so he can overpower it. Now, he can become a head case, which is going to be interesting on the this weekend to see if he starts making. He's going to make bogeys. You're going to make bogeys out there. So if he can, you know, just play within himself, I, I think he's going to be there. Um, he's putting really well, um, but he can 
he can get in his own head and and flame out. Charlie, I hate to ask you this because everybody loves Jordan Spieth. Yeah. But he's not playing. And I'll correct me if I'm wrong. He's not making it to the yeah. weekend. Does right. he does he still have the juice, so to speak? Man, that's it's a loaded question. Um you know, I will always I will always root for Jordan Spieth. Um Absolutely. God, it, it, it's I'm I'm a Longhorn through and through. I uh, love Jordan, and I wish him the best. But um, I, I don't know. It's yeah. Uh, it's one of those things. I can't I can't dive into the head of Jordan Spieth right now. But um, yeah. he he's he, obviously in 2015, he was putting up numbers uh, that were just ridiculous. They're they they're, they're, they're honestly video game numbers, as I say, quote unquote. But um, and then, and then what happened in 2016 happened on number 12 at Augusta, and it's just kind of collapsed. And he hasn't quite been the same since. And I know that, you know, during during certain rounds, he's trying to make all these different changes. And I just, I wish, I wish that he would get back to just that, that Jordan, just play, play the game like he did while you were playing in 2015. But I don't know, I, I, I honestly don't know what, what's going on with him but um man i i really 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 hope <laughs> for the best for him uh it would be great to see him come back and have like a a, a scheffler and speeth rivalry that'd be yeah, amazing kind of like a kind of like a tom kite and ben crenshaw rivalry it would be great for the pga tour and be great for the state of texas but um uh gosh i i just don't know i i don't know the last two years, the last two years, if you've seen his pre-shot routine, yeah, it's gone bonkers. It's, yeah. It changes almost like monthly. It seems like, mm -hmm. which just tells me he's not comfortable. Um, he, he'll he'll have a one or two good rounds, but he can't. He hasn't been able to put four rounds. I think he won the Heritage last year or two years ago, but uh, he's far from where he was in 2015. Yeah. Yeah. I can't quite figure it out, but his Longhorn counterpart, uh, we number one golfer in the world, Scotty Scheffler, he was asked, um, I believe on Monday, the press conference day, or maybe it's Tuesday, about learning how to be selfish. And I think this is a lesson to everybody when whatever field you're in, you've got to value your own time. And I, I, I don't know if you guys heard this, but I, I thought this soundbite right here uh, – was meaningful, and I think everyone can learn from what Scotty said. Um, golf definitely is a selfish sport. You know, you're out there by yourself, and when you're at the peak of your of your game, you know, people need stuff from you a lot of the time, and you have to be selfish with your time. And it's it's not easy to say no, but you have to learn how to say no to certain people. And because uh, ultimately, when you come out to the golf a golf tournament, you're you're here to compete and you're here to do your best and you can't really get caught up in all the stuff that's going on around you. And so I'm hoping it doesn't define me too much because um, like, I, I feel like I say it a bunch of golf, something that I do, it's a tremendously huge part of my life, but it doesn't define me as a person. Wow. Wow. C6. Yeah. I mean, that's a great perspective for anybody, but do you guys both, I mean, that, that's got to pour over into how he approaches the game that it's, He's still treating it like it's just a hobby almost, and he, yet he's number one golfer in the world. <laughs> well, uh, what else can he do? I mean, it's um, I think that I think the thing that's really scary about Scotty Scheffler is that um, he is he has obviously won at the biggest stages in the world. He's won the Masters. He's won several different huge tournaments. And what, what's scary about Scotty is that. He's not one of those guys that really pumps his fist and like screams really loud. He, he'll make he'll make a forty foot putt and just be like, "Yep, pick his ball out of the hole and and go the next." I'm like, "Wow, that guy is that guy is mentally so strong." I, I, the, to, 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 to see that is uh, is a, it's it's unlike any other, and for um, for him to say something like that, like you got to learn how to say no, is uh, that that. That reigns true. It's um, I've had to learn that in my life. You know, I've had to tell people no. 
I had to, I, you know, I couldn't do that at a certain part of my life, but I learned how to do it. He's right. Um, but Scotty, if he continues on this path that he's on, he's going to be one of the greatest players of all time, hands down. And, and and Todd, no does not mean yes. It just means, hey, maybe later. But, I mean, we've all done it. I mean, Todd, both of you take pride in your games as well as running a golf business at a country club and instructing people. I mean, have you ever heard of that perspective before of learning how to say no to certain things to improve? Yeah, no, not really. I mean, and he's um, – he, he kind of has – um, my demeanor, I'm, I'm kind of that way. I'm never going to be on that stage, but you know, I can see where he's coming from because if I'm, you know, if I were, able, you know, let's say I make the champions tour just as a dream in a year or two, yeah. you know, I, I want to give as many autographs as I can and, and interviews and, and be cordial and not be the, you know, Don Johnson's character from 10 cup, um, you know, <laughs> kicking dogs behind the camera, but, um, um, yeah. And I think that's why he's had the success he's had, you know, he's, he's not, he's not tiger. He's not chasing history. His dad didn't set him up. It's like, Hey, you're going to be the greatest golfer ever. He didn't have that pressure on him, which makes tiger's record even more phenomenal that he was able to do that. Um, hmm. but yeah, it's, it's not life or death. It's, it's golf. And I think that takes a lot of pressure off him and, we're seeing that with Rory last year when he became kind of the ambassador between PJ Tour and Liv. All his time was spent in front of the cameras, and it's hurt, it's hurt his game. Yeah, that's a good point. And that's a whole other podcast, the uh, Liv factor and the, the division it's caused. But, hey, the, the hard-hitting question, I, I have yet to go to Augusta National, but the first thing I'm going to do for a practice round, I'm headed to that uh, – Wherever they serve the food, I'm going to get two or three of those dollar fifty pimento cheese sandwiches. Who, which of you has eaten one of those, and are they as legit as the hype that they receive for the said pimento cheese sandwiches? Charlie, nope. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't had one. No, no I um, I have, I have not had one. Um, yes. The only pimento cheese sandwich I've ever had is the one that my father, uh, Charlie the Fifth, <laughs> has made. I love pimento cheese. I love the way my dad makes it, uh, but I've not had an authentic Augusta National pimento cheese. But I'm, I'm I'm pretty sure, Sean, that it probably tastes the same. Yeah, it's so good. A family so old good. recipe that started <laughs> back when this tournament started. Yeah, I mean, it's it, pimento cheese is pimento cheese. It's kind of hard to screw that up. I oh. love it. Todd, I will let you take this over. Go ahead. H-E-B probably makes it just as good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hey, Todd, do you like do you like pimento cheese? I, I hate pimento cheese. Yeah, I'm, there you go. I'm going to get to go to the Masters next year for the first time, um, and I'm gonna, I'll am gonna i do the egg salad sandwich for sure. Ooh, yeah. so, Give me all the above. I'll, I'll uh, do I'm that. Not afraid. Um. Yeah. You can have all those pimento cheese you want, Sean. Yeah, well, you got to worry about bowel issues if you have more than a certain few. I mean, it can, it can create <laughs> that, other issues. That, that's Charlie's issue, too. Yep. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> Hi, gastroenterology. <laughs> uh, v. Lundquist, Vern Lundquist, uh, he was on two episodes ago. Uh, it was a great conversation. Uh, I think we all can agree when I say this. We've admired his work from afar. He paints pictures for everybody and for every sport. But there's something special with his voice and the way he sees things, the pauses, and just lets a putt right out. And for him, we're – I mean, I know it means we're aging quickly. But to see a legend, this be his last time to call uh, the Masters – I'll start with you, C6, and work your way down to Todd. Your thoughts on Vern Lundquist, and this is his last ride. I mean, gosh, there's a it, – it's, it's hard to put into words what Vern meant to the Masters and, and to sports. Is, uh, he, had, he had a very artistic way of letting things happen before he spoke, and that you can't find that in, in you know – 
a lot of other people like Joe Buck. You know, I love Joe Buck, but he talks and talks and talks and talks and talks. But Burn knows exactly when to just stay quiet. Let it run. Let things unfold. And I think that one of the most iconic moments, and I, I know it sounds cliche to say this, but the um, the chip in 2005, number 16, <laughs> good Lord. It's just like I, I every single time I watch that, it's like the first time I watched it because of his voice, not just because of the shot. It's because of what Vern is doing. It's just like, well, here it is. And the ball, it, okay, and, and the ball starts kind of going toward the hole, and it's just, uh, it's just silence. He lets it just play out, and then it just, just all of a sudden, out of nowhere, as the ball is kind of about a, two feet away. Oh my goodness! <laughs> and it's just like, what? And then the ball drops, and it's just, oh, in your wow. life, have you seen anything like that? It just, but any other, any other commentator would just been like. You know, the whole time talking, 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 but Vern just knew when to just shut up and let the magic happen. And I don't think you can find that in uh, any other person these days. So he, and he, if you ask Vern about it, I'm sure he would say, I'm not a magician. I'm just a guy. Yeah. I'm just a dude. I yeah. was just, you know, letting it happen. But in our, in our minds and in our hearts, it was like, Thank you for not saying anything. <laughs> Thank you for not saying too much in that moment or, or all the moments that happened, you know, the yes, sir moment. Yes, sir. Uh, it's just, uh, yeah, he, he, he's just a magician that didn't know he was a magician. Todd, before you respond, I want you to, I want you to see this, both of you to see this. This is Vern, uh, I think on the practice round day being interviewed, uh, just addressing the elephant in the room, so to speak. Here's the, the emotion even today. Well, anticipation, uh, a little dread, because I don't want to get emotional on the air. I know it's going to happen. I know it's going to come, but I'm going to try and stifle any any uh, expression of emotion. It's This is the Masters for crying out loud. Yep. Todd, so, it's... I mean, I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. It, it, it's... I'm glad that we are aging and we're going to be old men and we're going to be really old, I hope. But this is a chapter closing for us who have followed him and been a part of our lives without him knowing it. Yeah. Yeah. And, and like Charlie said, he's one of the few that uh, knows when just to let the experience be the story, not words. Um, you know, you're witness. We're witnessing on TV, obviously. So, um, we're feel like we're in that moment. Um, and we're, we don't want to hear anything going on. We want to hear the crowd. We want to hear, um, just that split second of greatness. Um, and he was great. You know, Charlie talked about that one. Obviously we're going to talk about the 86 call with Nick, with Jack, um, you know, in the perfect time. Yes, sir. When Jack raises his putter and, uh, and rolls that in to go on to win. So, um, yeah, he, it's, there's not going to be very many, uh, uh, guys like him and, and Sean, you know, the thing I'm disappointed in is both you and I know his nephews, Keith and Dean. Yeah. And I'm, you know, I, I'm kind of mad at myself that I didn't use their friendship to get <laughs> go to Augusta earlier. So, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Keith, They're Keith Trojans Dean, too. Thanks a lot. I was your friend. You, you know, you could have hooked a brother up. Man, just it wouldn't have taken much. Just right. listen, you want to roll with us? You pay for the paint, get your own plane ticket. We got you taken care of in Augusta. Yeah. Um, so your our guy Tiger, who made the cut for a 24 straight year at a, at the Masters, he was asked about it. And I know Burn in, in episode 258 here, 358, he said that. He was going to wait at the champions' dinner at the at the bottom of the stairs to shake everyone's hand to thank them, and said he had a, obviously a, a stronger relationship with Jack than he did Tiger, but he's going to make sure to have a conversation with Tiger. And speaking of, this is what Tiger had to say about uh, his salute to Vern Lundquist. He has just an amazing ability to bring in 
the audience and describe a situation and, and just be able to narrate it in a way that is poetic, but it's also, um, he describes it with emotional, with emotionality, and he just draws the audience in. Um, and it's amazing, what is this, I think his 40th year maybe, I think it is now, 39, 40th year, um, to be able to call the Masters. I mean, that's what I grew up watching. He, he says exactly what all three of us have either were either yeah. thinking or have said. It's the same, it's the same reaction. Yeah. And it's strong. And I think that may be a good point for us to take a quick break and then uh, pay tribute to our family at our friends at Hargrove Roofing. And I'm sure they're pretty busy right now after those three and four inch hailstorms bombed over. Uh, they, they were falling like uh, Crenshaw's. Uh, drivers or, or or whenever you guys use a drum uh, i can't even know what i'm trying to say use your drivers out there at balcony's country club I, now you guys don't hit your members roofs i don't think yeah we do yeah all the time it's like it. charlie's drives hitting houses on the it's like hell the golf yeah. going i love it i love every uh, yeah it's, it's awesome <laughs> the take no these are the guys you may want and I'm just going to warn you at the very end. There's some really, really low quality acting. You'll you'll see. I'll okay. see you on the other side. Here at Hargrove <laughs> Roofing, uh, we try to think outside the box to kind of get the creative juices flowing. So I brought in my friend Stevie Lee, former defensive tackle for the Texas Longhorns. Um, he's going to help the team strategize, really motivate them, light a fire. This guy's going to block down. This guy's going to block down. You put your butt into the guard, and that way my Mike linebacker gets free to do what? Not only are they going to learn a thing or two, but they're going to also leave with a great attitude and a bunch of smiles on their faces. I, I'm sorry, what does this have to do with roofing exactly? Get out. Right now. I said get out. For me, that's what it's all about. It's just having fun, making our employees have a great time. Hargrove Roofing, know who's on your roof. champion Sergio Garcia playing his 25th Masters left of the whole location well the volume was a little low golf clap <laughs> um you know the, the gotta be a cool kid the, you know the short for outfit is your fit Sergio looked like a John Deere green commercial and <laughs> we love Sergio he's an Austinite I yeah. know it was master <laughs> colors but was that the loudest fit at the Masters to date that maybe you guys have noticed? He looked he looked like a uh, half peeled banana. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God! Yeah, that's what I thought. That or John Deere Green. You want to hear my take? Please. All right. I mean, as long as you have the game to back it up, that's fine. I love it. I love it. Look, I think the most dangerous thing you can do in the world of golf is is kind of really dress as a character. And I think that one guy that I'll, I'll always – you guys can vouch for this too. Um, one guy I'll always hold dear in my heart is Payne Stewart. Oh, my goodness. Yes. Yeah. Payne Stewart was the most colorful player probably the PGA tour has ever seen, but he had the game to back it up. And uh, Sergio, I love, I, I mean, I love it. <laughs> it's this, it's this Spaniard in banana pants. And um, I think it's great. He's a, he, he, he won it in 17 and uh, he's a master's champ. So God, who's going to stop him? It, I think it's great. Um, I think, I think that um, golf, uh, it, it really lets you kind of let loose with your personality and lets you dress the part sometimes. And uh, I love that. I, you know, we don't, we, we, we don't need to all be wearing a, appropriate colors and, and dark colors. And nah, I like the fact that we're banana pants. Hell yeah. Sergio. 100% Sergio, Angela's wife uh, uh, from Austin, her, his father-in-law, former Texas Longhorn. It's uh right. he's the true Austin night. Now yes. I got to move you guys along here to, 
We'll begin with Todd, your favorite Masters moment. And I, I don't mean plural, I, I, if because uh, we if we listed all of our favorite master moments, <laughs> Masters moments, we'd be here for an hour and a half. I promise you that. Yeah, uh, probably. Gosh, over the year, I'm gonna have to. It's I'm gonna have to go with '97 Tiger. I mean, Oof. it's cliche, but you know. Um, Break the record, just destroy the field, um, and just the start of an unbelievably stupid run. That was a good one. Now, for Crenshaw, I think I'm going to pull up a photo, and I'm just guessing, just guessing, this may be your favorite Masters moment. <laughs> Uncle <wasn't> Ben. <laughs> I wasn't alive. Well, you were you were a sperm cell at that time. <laughs> no, I mean, you, you, you're close. You're close. But um, if you pulled up a, another one in 95 where he was yeah. bent over on the 72nd hole, yeah, maybe. Uncle V. Ben Crenshaw, um, yeah. Austin Maroon, loyal forever. Uh, yeah. No, and, and, you know, how, that, how much time do I have here, Sean? Is that 87? That's 84. 80, 80, 80, yeah, 84. That's 84 right there. And the beloved caddy. Well, that was, yeah, Carl Jackson was his caddy for over 40 years. And um, the reason why Ben selected Carl was because he he wanted somebody. He, I'll tell you this. My, my uncle really, really, really wanted the Masters. That's what that, – that's a one tournament – he really wanted his entire career. And so um, he was 11 years. Sean, how much time do I have? No, you go ahead and tell the, <laughs> okay. yeah. yeah. All right. So he's um, he was 11 years into his career at on the PGA Tour. And he just he was not getting it done in the majors. And he had all these expectations around him. And he finally said, you know what? I need a caddy at Augusta that can really tell me the lay of the land, the curvature uh, of the putts and the undulations. And the, the, I mean, uh, freaking the blades of grass. And so he, he saw a tall gentleman out there um, cutting grass and just said, how long have you been working here? And oh, since I was six years old, I think. All wow. right. Okay. What's your name? My name is Carl. He goes, well, come, come. You, you want to be my caddy? He's, yeah. Hell yeah. I'll be your caddy. So they, <laughs> they, they developed a friendship and um, they did very well together. They, they placed in the top five, you know, a number of times, top 10 multitude of times, but the very special years, the one they, the one that they should have won too is 87. They, they let, they kind of let it slip in the end, but 84 and 95, were the really special ones and um that that the picture that you're seeing there i think that was number 14 right there where ben had a um <laughs> i say ben I, uncle ben he had a um he had like a 70 foot putt that was a very 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 big uh right to left swinging putt and he would have laid down and died for a two putt there so he left his he left his his first putt about, as you can see, about fifteen feet short, and he he, he you know, he really needed that two putt to, for par to go on the next hole, and he stepped up and and sank that putt right there, and it was just like it was that moment right there, um, when you make a par putt like that at Augusta, you know, a fifteen to twenty foot par putt. That is so downhill. I, I know the picture there doesn't do it justice, but it's so downhill and so right to left that it, it you could you could hit ninety nine balls and maybe make ten of those. And that he made wild. that. He made that, and it was just that. That's the moment right there that he knew it was just his day in eighty four. Um, but if you ask me, my favorite uh, Masters moment, you know. It's I'm biased, of course, because my uncle's won it twice. But uh, of course, there's the Tiger Chip in it at, uh, at 16. There's you know the Bubba Watson playoff, you know Ooh. hook shot that he hit that that was unbelievable. Um, but you know it, 
95 was very, I was seven years old. And uh, I remember that that Friday night, uh, Friday night, my dad started packing a bag. And, you know, we went, we, me and my sisters went to the room and said, well, you know, where are you going, dad? And he goes, I'm going to Augusta, Georgia. Oh, my God. Why? He goes, because your uncle's fixing to win the Masters. And we were just like, so what? Who cares? You know, like we didn't, we didn't understand the magnitude of this thing. And he goes, well, I'm, I'm going to go watch it. And it be, it's because Ben, my uncle Ben had a great, no, no pun intended. He had a great feeling about this. <laughs> he said, I need to have my brother here for this. So he called wow. my dad. He called my dad Friday night and said, get to Augusta right now. I'm going to win this thing. I, I can feel it. And so my dad, he, my dad got a, a late plane ticket, uh, got entrance into the Masters, and um, the rest is history. But like you know, that Sunday, I just remember it was my my mother, my sisters, my brother, and we were all kind of gathered around the living room area. And that was back when all, they, there was no cell phones; there was it was yeah. only landline. Yeah. And do like. I, again, Sean, I didn't, I didn't understand the magnitude of it. I was, I was seven years old and, uh, but I just remember that the phone was ringing off the hook all day. People were pounding on the door saying, you know, like, you know, Ben's about to win this thing. And then, and then once he finally won, um, it was just like, uh, because we knew that Harvey had passed. That, that was a big thing. It was Harvey Pennick passed away that Monday. And Ben was a pallbearer at the at the funeral, and um, then he goes back back to Acosta after all that, after all that, and his game his game before that was in shambles, and he goes back to Augusta and wins the damn thing, and it's like uh, it, it, you just couldn't you couldn't write a script like that, you know? That's incredible. I did not, but it actually it happened. Happen. So that that. that Yes, as cliche as it sounds, that's my favorite Masters moment. It was the 1995 Masters when he uh, made his final bogey putt. He is a bogey. <laughs> he played for bogey right there because he was two shots ahead of Davis Love the third. Put in for bogey on the 72nd hole and bent over, took his hat off and cried. And that, did, to me, it didn't get any better. That's a great story. I, I'm going to be honest with you both. I had never heard that before. And that's... I hope the viewer, I hope you're watching or listening to this. That's a moment in history, the uh, story behind the, the story, actually. Yeah. Yeah. And now, Todd, you'll remember this one. This is the one that really, really sticks out to me. Uh, 1986 Masters, it was raining. There were rain delays it, when, it, when Jack Nicholas kept moving up the board. Um, he surpassed Seve Ballesteros. Greg Norman, and then Tom Kite finished second, the former Longhorn golfer. Yep. What is going on here? <laughs> There's balloons. I just had random balloons. Did y'all send balloons? No. How did Somebody that happen? Is, that was is, a that like a, is that a cue to say, like, Charlie went way too long on his story? I don't know what that was, where the random balloons came from. That was bizarre. <laughs> I'm just glad it wasn't pornography. <laughs> <laughs> hey, real quick. Who are your two guys? Start with you, Todd. Who, what two guys will be in contention on the back nine Sunday? Uh, Scheffler, for sure. Um, I'm going to – you know what? I'm going to say Max Homa. That's a, he's leading it right now. I think I think they're tied, um, right. and he's he's been playing some good golf the last couple of years. He's been he's had a ton of top tens, and um, I'm, I'm I would actually like to see Max win it. I saw him talking to Johnny Manziel, so but that who doesn't knows, mean anything. Who knows what that conversation was like? <laughs> yeah, C six yeah. who. Are you the same? You feel the same way? I mean, I've got, I've got, to, I've got to put Scheffler in there. I don't think that yeah. there's anything that's going to stop Scheffler. Uh, Scheffler and uh, um, let's go. Deschambeau. Deschambeau. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. PGA live. 
Yep. PJ and Liv, they unite. I think they will unite at some point. Uh, <laughs> but to your point, Todd, Homa, Scheffler, and DeChambeau all tied, share the top, share the lead at six under. Six yep. under is pretty good considering how that started. Now, before we end this, I was going to have you guys talk about Balcones Country Club, but we've clearly buried the lead story. Our guy down the bottom, the head golf pro, and you we can sum it up, but this has to be talked about praise. And I know Todd's not one that likes to have praise, but you saved the life of a Balcones Country Club member who was clearly having a heart attack. You didn't hesitate. You you get a call, you get in a cart, you find the member on the cart path, and I'm sure it time stood still, but it really didn't matter because you went to work and you saved this man's life. Yeah, he uh, got a call from a member. The guy was unconscious, turning blue. Um, so, yeah, I, I went out and um, he's, you know, he was he was out. He, I've, I've never experienced anything like that before, um, but um, being trained years ago, um, yeah, just went straight into CPR on him. Uh, my maintenance guy, Justin, came over, was assisting me. Um, we, we got a couple of gasps of air from him um, after about 40 or 50 compressions. Um, got a pulse, and uh, but then lost it again um, and worked on him for about five minutes uh, until the uh, paramedics showed up, um, and then they took over. Um, and then EMS came over and they started doing their thing. So, um, you know, about 12 to 15 minute ordeal of um, working on this member. Um, and he he's he's in a coma. You know, we're, um, we're praying and hopeful that he, he pulls through. It's a miracle uh, just what he went through and what I was seeing that he's, you know, still alive, still breathing. Um, but um yeah, it was um, uh, almost instinctual. Um, didn't really think about it much, um, but um, it's definitely a, a first for me. Um, I'm, I'm hoping the guy pulls through so I can give him a hug. Let's pray that happens. Man, yeah. I know the family is grateful. Crenshaw told me a little bit about it, and I didn't mean to dump it on you or surprise you with it, but I, 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 we can't let something like that um not be discussed because that's we need more great stories like that unfortunately yeah. someone's health and life is at risk but we need to hear more stories about people like you and i know crenshaw would have done the same thing because you guys are wired the same way same type of people just uh man i congrats man and that's really proud to hear that and i hope he does pull through i really do for the family too yeah, yeah. One, one, one thing i'll say about todd is that um no, no matter what the situation is about, not just at Balcones Country Club, but, you know, everyday life that Todd truly, he put, he puts others before himself and that's what he did in that situation. And he cared and went out there and took care of business. And, uh, you know, I wasn't there. I, I was not there. I, I heard about it just through text message. And uh, I was like, God, are you kidding me? But uh, that, that's the kind of guy, that's the kind of guy who Todd really is. Yeah. And that's, and so you watching or listening, whatever platform you're, you're listening to this episode, this is what it's about. Individuals, humans like this, and uh, a big shout out to Todd Leonard. And he was raised well by a great mom and dad, too. So was uh, C6. Um, and we'll really be praying for that, that, that man's life and his family as well. And gentlemen, I appreciate it. And hopefully we can coordinate, get back together Sunday. Uh, after all this is uh, done and we find out um, who will win it, Scotty Scheffler, won't name names, uh, at Augusta. But, uh, man, I've enjoyed it. We need to do this more often. Yeah, for Fun. sure. Do it again. Do it again. And we'll maybe, do it. Maybe uh, some uh, when the chariot races kick off, we'll yeah. break that down. <laughs> we need to do it from the Leonard Resort, Come just, on. Nor just north of Austin. So we won't reveal location. <laughs> yeah. right. I'm in witness protection. That's right. That's right. Clearly, you're living in a great witness protection program behind you. So for C6, 
the Charlie Crenshaw the Six and Todd Leonard. Go visit them at Balcones Country Club. And for all you watching and listening, hey, when it's Masters Week, you know what? It's always good to talk about it. <laughs>